Once upon a time, there was a king called Sunanda and his queen Chanda, and they lived very happily in a palace. But they did not have a child, and they really, really wanted one. So one day, the king suggests to the queen, it's a full moon, why don't you just go and lie down on your couch in your room, very quiet, keeping Sila, and just wait and see what happens. So she does this, and she goes to rest. Now in the heaven of the 33, Lord Shakya, the king of those gods, saw what was happening, and he also knew that the Bodhisattva, the Buddha-to-be, was in his heaven realm. So he approaches him and says, this would be a very good rebirth for you. Why don't you go and find rebirth as the child of King Sunanda and Queen Chanda? And so he does. And the lady lying on her couch felt as if her womb were being filled with diamonds. And she knew that something had happened and that she had conceived. So she tells her husband, and when the child is born, a beautiful, healthy baby boy is there. And they call him Temia. Now, it was the custom in those times to get seers to look at a child to see what his destiny was. And the seers look at him and say, this is a very well, healthy and auspicious child. He will do very well indeed. He will be great. And on that day, 500 children were born in the palace and the city around, and they all received gifts. And all the children and all the parents received arms and things to keep them going. And the king granted his wife a boon. He said, what would you like? And she just said, I'll wait. Thank you for asking. Now the child grows up very well. And when he's a baby, his father takes him into the court so that he can just see what's going on and get to know his uh, interactions and the role he's going to take one day as king. But the child is appalled. For four thieves are brought in and the king condemns them to terrible deaths. And he sees this happening and a memory comes back to him. Because before he had been born in heaven, he had been reborn in a hell. And the reason he had been born there was because he too had been a king in an earlier life. And he too had given terrible punishments to criminals. And because of that karma, he had spent a long time in a rather unpleasant hell realm. He was very deeply upset about this. And when they put him on his bed, he started to wither like a lotus and to get unhappy and ill. Now in the white parasol, the royal parasol that was placed above his bed, there lived a goddess and she saw he was unhappy. What's wrong, she said. And he told her. Before this birth, I was in a heaven realm. But before that, I was in a very bad hell. And the reason for that was because I had been a king and had administered terrible punishments to criminals. I've just seen my father doing the same. That's what he wants me to do. I can't do it. What am I going to do? I'm so frightened of being reborn in this terrible hell. I don't want to hurt people. What shall I do? So the goddess says, I have some advice for you. From now on, pretend to be a cripple. Pretend to be deaf. Pretend to be dumb. Then they won't want to make you king. Okay. So after that, he's completely floppy when anybody picks him up. He doesn't eat. He doesn't eat well. He doesn't respond. And he doesn't chatter like other little babies. And he grows up and people think there's definitely something wrong with him. When he's five, they try frightening him with wild elephants. But he keeps cool. He has made a resolve and he is going to keep to it. They put terrible snakes near him just to see what will happen. 
but he keeps to his resolve. When he's ten, they test his hearing and have terrible loud noises coming from conches blowing in all directions. But he doesn't respond. They try fire of various kinds and think to frighten him, but he doesn't respond. By the time he's 16, all his 500 fellows who've been born the same day as him have become young, handsome people and are happy and flourishing, but he isn't. So they try sending beautiful ladies to him to lure him to some response, but he keeps to his resolve. Not one chink is open. So the king calls back the seers and says, well, what did you tell me about my child? He said he was healthy, but he isn't. And the seers said, ah, um, we did see a real danger to your kingdom in this child, but we felt it was best not to tell you. Now you must get rid of him because we still see a danger to your kingdom. So the king says, right, I will put him in a carriage, an unlucky carriage, and send him out and he will be killed. But the boy's mother was devastated. She pleaded, she said, when my child was born, you said I could have a boon. Please just make him king, just for seven days. And the king realized he'd said that, so he must keep his word. So the child was made king for seven days and he was paraded around in, in great pomp with a whole panoply of people around him, but he still did not respond. So weeping, she went to him at night and she said, I know you're all right, dear Temia. I know there is nothing wrong with you. Please, please respond to me. But the child, although he was torn apart inside, kept still. The charioteer came and took the child from the weeping mother and placed him on his carriage. And he decided to go out of the southern direction of the city, which is the part of the city for inauspicious events and for funerals. But carriages in ancient Indian stories tend to have lives of their own, and the, this carriage refused to go there. It went out auspiciously through the main entrance of the city. When the charioteer had been travelling for a while, he found a very beautiful spot, and he said, right, this is it now. I will hit the child over the head with a spade, and then I will bury him. So while he's digging his hole, ready to put the body of the child, Temia realises his moment has come. He gets out of the carriage, walks around, tests his limbs, flexes his muscles, and realises he is completely fine. So he picks up the carriage and twirls it over his head just to show to himself that he can do it. And he does. The charioteer comes back. Who is this man? Who are you? Temir explains. I was in a terrible hell realm once and I don't want to go back there. So I pretended to be a cripple and deaf and dumb. I'm now going to be an ascetic and live here quietly and practice meditation. But the charity said, how can I go back to the city and say you're doing that? And Temir said, don't worry, I will be a friend to you. And he gives some verses on friendship, which end, just as the wind does not harm a banyan grown with spreading roots, so enemies do not harm him who is loyal to his friends. So the charioteer goes back to the king and queen and explains what has happened and says, come and see your son. He's fine, he just doesn't want to be a king. So they go out to visit him. And when they find him there, Visakama, the, the architect of the gods, has built him a lovely leaf hut. And he's sitting meditating. And he gives them nice leaves and teas to drink. First, the king doesn't like it. He said, but I'm not used to this kind of uh, food. But when he hears the boy's story and realizes how deeply his resolve had been set and how he always wanted to be an ascetic and did not want to be king, the king thinks, oh, well, I might do that too. And the queen says, oh, and I might do that too. So they go back to the city and the 500 children born on the same day and all the citizens around all hear what has happened and 
think they'd like to go to the forest and practice meditation. So they leave the city empty and they all go out and join him. And a beautiful leaf huts are created everywhere and they practice meditation. And then an enemy king comes to the city and he sees it empty and decides to take it over, but then finds out what the people of that city have done. So he thinks, well, that sounds a very nice idea. I'll do the same. And all in all, seven kingdoms went and joined them all in the woods and the forests. And they all lived happily, practicing meditation. And they all attained wonderful meditation states and were reborn in heaven realms. And what was the reason for this? One child's resolve. Because when Prince Temir decided to pretend to be a cripple, not to be king, he set up a series of events whereby in the end so many people were happy and lived together in harmony in the woods.